The other thing I really want people to realize is that it's not about artistry. It's really about communication. So if you think about the cave paintings and picture them in your mind's eye, right? They're pretty simple, they're pretty primitive, but they express a lot. And you know, you can think about this even with texting, like we send emojis all the time that depict a lot of nuance. So your audience is hardwired already to make meaning out of even your most simple stick man. Welcome to the Weekly Leadership Experience, a place for leaders to get inspired, be challenged, and grow. I am your host, Rashad Oberlander. Let's get started. Today's episode of the Weekly Leadership Experience is brought to you by my 7-Day Leadership Growth Challenge. It's a free challenge that I've created, and it's delivered by email over the course of 7 days. I've created seven compelling questions to challenge various aspects of your leadership, the way you lead, and why you lead. Go to rashadoberlander.com and scroll down until you find the seven-day leadership challenge, or look for the link in the show notes. And now, on with the show. Hello, leaders, and welcome to this week's show. It's good to have you back, and I'm excited to introduce you to Nora Herting. A pioneer of visual strategy, Nora is passionate about expanding people's definition of creativity and believes the best way to meet the demands of business today is to take a visual approach that blends strategic thinking and creative expression. Nora's skill and impact with businesses and her own entrepreneurial prowess, founding ImageThink has been featured in The Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Fox Business, Entrepreneur, and Inc. She leads a compelling conversation around the power of visual thinking as a catalyst for personal and organizational change. Nora, welcome to the Weekly Leadership Experience. Okay, yeah, great to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, and I know you're calling from Brooklyn, so thank you for joining me late in the day. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about visual leadership and all the things that you are up to. Um, before we get really into that, I'd love to get a little bit more about your background. You had the fine art photography, you taught art for some time. So what was it, I guess, about that? And then what caused you to, to bring your expertise to the world of business? Yeah. How did I end up here? Right. Yeah. Um, so um, sort of you know, your life just unfolded. I, uh, I had gone to school for, for photography. I got a master's in fine art. And um, I was from a very like working class family. I was first generation to college and being, you know, interested in art, really the only sort of like steady viable job that was presented was, you know, get a, be a professor, you get your tenure, you have your health insurance. We need that in America, you know? Um, and uh, it, it was, it was very competitive. So I, I worked really hard. I got a, a teaching position at a private college when I was 27 and then pretty quickly had this horrible sort of horrible realization that the thing I had been working for was sort of a failure of imagination. Um, I hadn't really, you know, as, as creative as I thought I was, I hadn't really gone out there and sort of figured out what else I can do with my skill set. So, you know, what do you do when you decide that you're quitting your job? Well, you move to New York with no plan and no job. And before I did that, I went home and saw mom and, um, she, you know, she was like, well, you, when you move to New York, you're going to get a job in the art firm. And I was like, the art firm, mom, what's that? She's like, oh, you know, I, th- like, I think, I think a lot of really great movies start this way. No yeah, risky business. There's like a lot of eighties movies about the art. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was like you, I was like kind of laughing at her and she's like, you know, there's artists and they'll work for a company and they go to work and they make art for companies and it's like a law firm Nora but for artists you know the art firm um and at that point she was so serious about it that I wasn't smiling anymore and I said you know mom that just that doesn't exist you know and she got this really disconcerted look on her face and she got really quiet and she said and Nora what are you going to do <laughs> And I felt awful because I was like, I I don't know, mom, I don't have a job and I quit my job and I have two degrees and I don't have an answer for you. Um, 
And I, I fell in with uh, a consulting firm, global consulting firm that had what we would call now, Rashad, like a design thinking uh, capability. But this was early 2000s and no one called it that. I just thought it was this weird place that was like full of whiteboards and toys. And um, we would work and kind of design and produce these three or four day intensive design sessions. And I learned the skill of graphic recording which is the live uh, translation of ideas from words in spoken language into pictures there there at the job. Um, And that sort of, you know, later we held, I started, you know, my own kind of thing off on my own. And, uh, you know, 12 years later, here we are, you know, a company that's worked in, I don't know, 26 countries and we support about 300 sessions a year for, for our clients, um, using visuals as a, a tool for aligning, clarifying, and pointing people towards action. Wow. What a story. I, I mean, it's kind of, like I said, like a lot of what you described, sound, it kind of sounds like the start of a good Hollywood movie, um, you know, and then somewhere we're going to, you know, have the whole you know hero's journey and struggle of <laughs> entrepreneur and all this There's kind of stuff like a montage in there right <laughs> like a, at some point with lots of drawings and like the pages flip and and then suddenly we're like a decade later you know yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah. so 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 the so the reel of your movie is rolled on you know 10 or 12 years later you've had all this wonderful experience you've now written a book uh, draw your big idea. And this book, as you sort of described with your clients, helps readers visualize ideas and transform the creative process. But um, I'd love for you to tell us more about why this approach is so important to business leaders. Yeah, great. So, um, you know, first of all, visuals are a really basic way that we communicate. I like to talk, take people when I talk about this way back in time, you know, say this is not something that I invented, Image Thing invented. It predates us about 30,000 years, um, which is the earliest cave paintings um, that were found. Uh, And inside these caves, there's pictures of bison and game. And anthropologists believe that this was hunting instructions, right? So it's an example, what I like to think of as sort of the first innovators who had an idea, you know, let's not forage for berries, but let's like, I wonder what these giant animals taste like, um, to use visuals to organize a group around something that's complex. And even though, you know, we're not, uh, in a, you know, hunting food out in the savanna right now, we are working with a lot of complexity. We're working not just with our tribe, but people around the world, um, dealing with more and more complex systems and complex concepts. So visuals can be a really powerful way to ground people in abstract ideas that tap into a really innate way of communicating. We communicated in pictures before we had written language. If any of you have children at home, you know that children draw you know, freely and expressively, sometimes before they've mastered language. So there's a real blueprint for us in how visuals resonate with us, how we create meaning from them. And so for leaders who need to roll out a large strategic plan or simplify things or be able to capture people's attention with storytelling and metaphor, this is a really powerful way to do that. Yeah, I mean, it, like I, the communication is is incredible, and like you say, like the the whole concept of how you know instructions and events and and various things were recorded uh, before there were really uh, you know written form uh, words and things like that. So you know, the idea of translating ideas in business um, seems to make sense. Um, Something else that I'm sort of a little curious about, I guess, in terms of what you do and your processes and what I see out in the world is there's a lot of, I guess, processing and therapy involved in art as well. Is there some correlation in terms of how we roll this through with translating ideas in business? Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not an art therapist, so I don't want to, you know, speak of my pay grade, but I can tell you that I've seen... Um, I've seen some business group therapy come out kind of in sessions. For for example, 
Um, it helps make like complex or challenging topics a little bit more approachable. Um, and, a, and an example in my book that we often use and we just personalize it for different clients, there's a diagram kind of called bridge to the future, right? So you get people to picture where they want to go, but there's always challenges. And so in this particular model, the challenge is a bunch of sharks in the water. Um, and I've worked with global companies that when we're like, what are the sharks? They're like, the sharks are leadership, right? And they label the sharks leadership. And by the end, they're, they're able to have this illustration that they're like, we're going to show the leaders, you know? And I believe that that would have been much harder for them to sort of say, hey, uh, the leadership is standing in our way if it was just a conversation. So sometimes having a metaphor, having something externalized will get people to be able to name the hard thing because it's a picture and it's not as intimidating or it's um, a metaphor. So it's sort of removed from your, you know, your everyday business situation. So that that's one example where, um, where I've seen it be able to kind of unearth things um, in a way that, uh, that otherwise I think people would be, you know, kind of playing politic or, or just there'd be a big elephant in the room, you know, but for us, we'll, we'll draw the elephant and then people will, will speak, <laughs> speak to it. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of, um, I guess we're, like, it's not so much that you're looking at changing the way people think as much as extracting the information that is, you know, stored up in the brain and getting it out in a way that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting way to think about it. It, it kind of depends on where a client is in a project, right? So, um, and, and that, in your example, that's really helpful for getting people to, um, to articulate things that they're doing that might be very abstract. Uh, we work with a lot of, of tech and healthcare companies, I think, in part because those are so technical that sometimes you know, engineers and people who are experts at that have a very hard time leveling it um, either up or down in a way where other people can kind of understand the value or, or understand the bigger picture of it. So in some ways, we're able to kind of pull all of those details out and then mirror it back in a way that's more accessible to, let's say, their clients or the marketing department or the HR department or someone, you know, that they have to interface with, but doesn't quite understand at the same level of detail. And a lot of time it is kind of, in those cases, sort of simplifying a lot of the business jargon or the details to really get at the, the meat of the message or the core idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that makes sense, I think. And it's, it's, it's interesting to me because there's a lot of stuff that becomes overcomplicated in business and, and, yourself and, and, and other guests that I've had on the show, um, you know, and, and not everyone talks this way, but, but people do speak about the need to simplify, um, you know, to, to drill down to what's important. Um, so, you know, something else that I've, I've seen of yours, Nora, that you mentioned and something I'd love for your, ex to expand on is combining what seems like sort of two opposing concepts, at least the way I think about it. And that's the blend of strategic thinking and creative expression. Could you tell mm -hmm. us more about that? Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, strategic thinking and creative expression. Well, I mean, I, I think that thinking strategically is kind of a creative act. Would you, wouldn't you agree? Because I would. You're, yeah, you're, you're having to think holistically about a lot of different things. You're having to project into the future. Um, you're having to possibly hold multiple streams of information um, together and kind of get yourself from where you are now to, to, to where you're going. Um, so one, of, one thing that I've learned that I like to message to people is, you know, creativity, and I'll come around to your question, I promise, but creativity is not just reserved for people who play an instrument or can paint, you know, um, or who sing or songwriters. Like, I feel, you know, having been an artist and in, in, in a typical sense that, you know, running image think is probably the biggest creative thing I've ever done, right? And that's a lot of strategy. So uh, to me, strategic thinking is already, you're already kind of in a creative thinking space. Um, what our work maybe does is then take that strategic thinking and make it um, 
make, make a story out of it and make it visual so that the person who has the strategy is sometimes not the greatest person at communicating it, right? The leader or the entrepreneur, whoever that is, is usually like six paces ahead of everybody else. And they're not necessarily unpacking everything in a way to bring everybody along. Um, and so one of the things we do is kind of take that, that idea and be able to expand it and sort of make it show people where they fit in literally into the, in the picture of the strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, it is interesting to think of it that way. And I suppose that the, the base of my question is, is that maybe, maybe a lot of people don't think of strategic thinking and creative expression as being in the same act and that they're separate behaviors. Um, you know, and it, I, I guess a lot of your work and probably your book really is about aligning that those two acts into what you now do, right? Yeah, I think that's true. And there's sort of they can they can fall into a different kind of dance, you know. So um, you can first use the creative expression to help you form the strategy and. In Draw Your Big Idea, that's kind of what we've laid out is sort of um, a bunch of visual and, and creative exercises to help people kind of think through where they want to go and how they want to get there. So I think that there's, you know, merit to helping people think strategically by first getting them to think creatively, or, you know, around what is possible, around thinking forward, thinking backwards, finding connections. And then what we do, I think, in which think also, Rashad, is once the strategy, once a company has a strategy, is help, you know, put a creative way to express that strategy to be able to bring everybody along, right? Because unless you're an individual with your own, you know, life plan, uh, probably even then, you really, that strategy, it takes engagement from other people it takes time it's a story that has to be told it's people need to understand how they fit into it right and so we really i think use creativity to make that robust and understandable to, to people as well but i think the creative thinking can definitely come in the beginning of it as well and help kind of get you to, to that point where you you see the strategy yeah well i think like, I mean, I think that there's a lot to be said for, you know, how that strategy is communicated. And I mean, strategy being, you know, one thing and then other things like mission, vision, values, anything where there's something that's sort of a, a difficult to convey, I guess, in, in mere words, really, because, you know, as you've pointed out, you know, a, a visual is oftentimes so much more powerful and how do you get your people to come along for the ride or how do you get them to buy into the big idea um you know putting visuals to our values or company values or, or the vision or the mission seems to be such a natural point because it seems that there's such a disconnect a lot of times where we've created this great strategic plan or this mission or vision or value and then implementing it is worlds apart oh yeah i know and i um i yeah i i i i strive to make sure at image think that we we try to not be those people right where it's just it's it's a meeting and then it, it dies there um you know so how do you bring those things to life and uh, values is a great example so you know, I I used to have the feeling you walk into like a, a corporate office and there'd be these big banners, you know, leadership, integrity. And it just, it felt like wallpaper, right? But um, we worked with a, a big pharma agency uh, a company years ago that, that was really smart about it. And they wanted to roll out new values and we helped them. Well, actually, we, we put hundreds of leaders through this where we talked to them about storytelling. And then you asked each person, Tell everybody at your table a story about how you lived one of these values. And it doesn't even have to be at work. The so people were telling stories like, oh, I dress up like Santa Claus and bring uh, presents to kids that have cancer. You know, uh, I, you know, here's a story about something that I did to, to help a patient. And we sat there and we drew up all of their stories as they were talking about them. But what that got them to do is it got them to really 
think through what it meant to them. Um, and where the visuals came in is then they had this external picture that they would take back to their offices and they'd hang up and people would come in and be like, well, why do you have this drawing of Santa Claus or whatever it was? And it would give the leader a chance to be like, well, this is why, you know, here's a story about this thing that I did. And it's one of our values. And it was such a great way to, you know, to socialize and get people really to to understand like what these values were and identify how they themselves live them and then give them a, a vehicle, a storytelling vehicle to pass that on. So I always had a tremendous amount of, of pride in helping support that project because um, I thought it was such a, a great way and a, such an individual like human way to empower these people to think about how they're living some of these values and, and pass it on. Yeah. Which sounds, I mean, it sounds like such a powerful exercise and I love how you described that, you know, that the symbolism and the, the way that people can understand how those values show up in their own lives just drives it home. Um, you know, one of the things that I, 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 this is sort of my, I guess my devil's advocate question, which I find that I do tend to ask at least one during an interview. Um, you know, and, and perhaps people think listening might be thinking this way is that, you know, they, the reason they can't or won't use visuals and creative thinking. And you've probably heard this before is like, we don't have time, you know, how, how do you address that? How do you, how do you oh, go in and, sure. and deal with people? I, that. I thought you were going to say that they can't draw, but we don't, we don't have time. Uh, but you know, I, Right. I mean, um, when we help kind of facilitate a whole meeting, usually it's like they want like five days worth of, of outputs in like a four hour meeting. So finding time is always uh, is always a challenge. Uh, there's a real expediency in um, being able to externalize an idea, right? Like whether that's on sticky notes or flip charts, I'm sure people and you have probably been in sessions where maybe it's not that visual, but there's at least an external manifestation of people not just talking, but it, it becomes more concrete. So, um, it can be a real accelerator in terms of there's your ideas thrown out, my ideas thrown out, we can see them up there on the board, whether they're in pictures or words, and we can realize if we're repeating ourselves because it's already up there. And sometimes we're, we're like, hey, yeah, we're still talking about this, but we've captured it. So can we move on? I mean, that's a small thing right there, Rashad, but it um, it definitely can kind of keep the, the conversation or the activity of action going. And then you're not, you don't end the conversation or you don't end the meeting with kind of this nebulous thing about, well, what did we actually talk about? What is our kind of takeaway? Or is someone taking, you know, meeting minutes? You have kind of this concrete thing to refer back to that everyone has access to because it's public, it's, it's, it's large, it's public in the sense that everyone can see it as it's unfolding and comment on and, and, and move from. So the, the accelerator can also be the fact that we're creating these artifacts that people can easily refer back to later that day or the next day or in a couple of months and continue to speak to and kind of move those ideas forward. Mm. Yeah. That makes sense. And I think that it, that easily can knock down that objection of we don't have enough time because, you know, if you can get, if you can see the value of being able to, get those ideas out. Like it just makes sense. Well, we're also, we're also working while people are talking. So that's the, the, the kind of miracle about my team is we it's live. So it's not like you have to stop for us to catch up. Um, you know, you're having your conversation and we're right behind you kind of summarizing all of, all of that. So at the end, when the meeting is over, all of our capture is also over. So, um, you know, there's not necessarily a delay in that happening. That's we're keeping pace. Yeah. This um, is sort of that graphic recording. Skill. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, which is a lot about thinking on your feet and listening really more than, mm -hmm. the, than the artistry. Yeah. I have mm -hmm. to ask, what, what is your most favorite part of what you do? It seems like such a fun thing that you get to do. And I, I, I feel like there's something there. 
Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I run the business now, so there's a lot of looking at spreadsheets and like dealing with, uh, you know, all of that stuff too. So sometimes I have, uh, I have envy over folks that work for me where I'm like, you have the fun part of the, you, you have what's left about the fun part of the job. Oh gosh, there's so much. I mean, I, uh, I really love being able to bring the power of visuals and visual thinking to people who um, who may have had uh, an appreciation or aptitude for that in the past that and they feel like it's been buried because they don't see how that skill set helps them in their day job or in their leadership position. And when they see kind of how it's a powerful tool and that they can potentially tap into something that they that they had once accessed or that they see the power of it, that is always really exciting, you know? And um, it's also great because people, uh, people are so generous. Like they're always just amazed at, at what we're able to do for them in, in a session. So there's always like a lot of, uh, compliments or congratulations or interaction. And, and that's great. I mean, how many people, you know, get to work with clients that are coming up to them and being like, how do you do this? You're so talented. This is going to be amazing. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, getting, getting to be in the room, you know, or in this case, a lot of time now it's virtual, but, but with clients and see, their excitement around how what we do helps connect the dots for them is really rewarding. Definitely. I think that that's like the idea that you get to help people experience breakthrough is, is huge. And I, I love that about, you know, any opportunity I get to help people do that um, is definitely key. So I appreciate that. Um, I'd love for you to let us know a little bit about, a couple of ways leaders can begin to incorporate creative expression into their day and how mm-hmm. it's going to be help, help them be more effective. Yeah. Great. So um, one of my uh, favorite things to do uh, to kind of warm up a group of people around this as an idea is um, rather than doing like an icebreaker or an intro, I've been in thousands of meetings and sometimes those are just, I find them personally really insufferable <laughs> is um Ask the people in your meeting to to draw a representation of what they do every day. So whatever their role is, right? Say, you know, and you can push it farther. Usually we ask people to visualize their name, you know, their role, maybe something, you know, maybe something personal. And this is something that people know all the time. They just answer. But when they're um, when they're asked to put it into pictures, what happens is it's usually pretty funny. Because people, you know, um, aren't necessarily proficient artists, but you also learn a lot about how someone thinks. So sometimes people will draw a role and they'll literally be like, this is the computer I sit in front of all day. And they're very literal. Um, Sometimes they're very tactical about, oh, and then I email this person, it goes there. And sometimes they're very metaphorical, you know, like, oh, this is the chaos, the scribble, and I'm, you know, I'm moving it all together. So you get a lot of insight into the way, different ways people think and also the ways that they think about the role that they have um, within an organization. So that is one that I think is um, a really easy way to start. Uh, Another example um, is to think about a challenge that you're facing right now and how would you picture that challenge to someone? Um, because if you're working visually, you're actually, it's not just a right brain, left brain, um, idea that's been debunked. You're actually using multiple parts of your brain, including your prefrontal cortex, which is the highest, you know, kind of most of our cognitive thinking. So in drawing out the picture, you're activating various centers of your brain, including sort of the most important one. Um, and you're getting, you're starting to think a little bit differently about how you might approach the problem. So those are two ways that I would just say, you know, people can experiment with um, trying to work in a little bit more uh, visual thinking and a little bit more creativity in their role as, as a leader or as a manager. Yeah. Oh, and I, I can see quite a bit of value in, in both of those ideas. It's just, I mean, I know the whole idea of journaling. I mean, I know that's written word, but like just 
getting some thoughts out and write them down on paper. And now if we take that and create a picture from that can be some really just eye opening things just for yourself, just to to look at and be like, okay, that's, that's how I'm thinking about this. Like maybe I need to adjust my own thoughts on, on what we're doing here. So really good. Um, starting to wrap up a little bit, Nora, um, what would be one or two points you really want listeners to remember about our conversation today? Yeah. Um, what I want you to remember listeners out there about our conversation is the idea of using pictures to explain concepts to people is extremely, extremely old. So we have a deep history of this being effective. Um, and you can tap into that yourself. The other thing I really want people to realize is that it's not about artistry. It's really about communication. So if you think about the cave paintings and picture them in your mind's eye, right? They're pretty simple. They're pretty primitive, but they express a lot. And, you know, you can think about this even with texting. Like we send emojis all the time that depict a lot of nuance. So your audience is hardwired already to make meaning out of even your most simple stick man. Um, so you, you don't need a lot of skills or tools to be able to communicate effectively. And as you know, leaders, that's what it's about. It's about communication. Yeah. Well, I mean, that really, I think is important to remember. And I think that that's definitely some really good takeaways here. Um, like we're already hardwired to, to think visually, um, and we've been doing it for a long time. Like nobody has to reinvent the wheel. Um, they just have to try it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, this has been a really good conversation. So a um, couple of final questions for you. Um, what would be one thing you know about life or leadership that you wish everyone knew? Oh, I know. I know that you, this, this is, this is a, a tough question. I was given some advice about leadership that was really helpful to me. And you think that maybe doing what I do, I wouldn't need to hear it, but um, which is, you have to message things to people multiple times in multiple ways, you know? So that can be, you know, that can be a conversation that can be a, you know, a town hall meeting that can be an email that can be a picture that can be a story, but that you have to change it up, not just because there's different types of people, but really for something to resonate with someone, they need to hear it multiple times in multiple ways. Um, you know, and I think that sometimes it's we, we get busy and we're like, okay, I told my team this, I messaged this, and you know, it it should it should resonate and be done, and we move on. Um, but really, it's kind of going back and figuring out different ways to layer on that that message and that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super important, and definitely something that we miss. I mean, it kind of goes back to my devil's advocate question of we not not having time. Well, we have to find time. Yeah. Um, so when it's all said and done, Nora, what three words do you want used to describe your life? Oh, um, I think it would be, she had some great stories, you know. Um, sometimes like you go through things and I'm like, well, that, that kind of, that was disappointing or that was, was that necessary? And I'm like, well, if it makes a good story, it's 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 worth it, you know. So... If keep if I come through life with with some good stories, I think I'll call that a success. She moved to New York with nothing but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good story. Or my my story about my time in Alberta, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. now now you have to tell your story about Alberta because oh yeah we okay. talked about that off air. So now it's on. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite mem- memories working for client at Image Think, um, you know, and we get to travel sometimes to great places, including Alberta, Canada, and Banff, um, you know, and, and get sort of treated like like everybody else in the meeting. And so I was, uh, our client was a Sikh, um, and he's in he's in Alberta, and we really needed him to kind of sign off on something before we started the day the next day. And uh, he said, No, 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 I'm not going to look at that and sign off on it until you dance with me to the song it was Gangnam he's like I love the song and um no one wants to dance because it's a very stuffy crowd of pension fund directors and we were also in a wigwam by the way because we were being treated as kind of like Alberta barbecue indigenous experience um 
So yeah, we went out there and we tore up the floor uh, in the wing wall, <laughs> uh, wing wall to to Gangnam Style, uh, which I haven't heard in many years, you know, because that was the hit of I don't know if anyone can place what year that is for me. Bonus points, but uh, yeah, you know, just a, just another day in the office for me there. <laughs> Well, that's a cool story. And, you know, I, I love, thank you for sharing that. And I love, you know, that we can talk about sharing and visualizing stories. I can almost picture you dancing to Gangnam Style <laughs> in a wigwam of all places. He was a great dancer, you know, so he really didn't need, he really didn't need our help at all uh, holding the dance floor. Awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Nora. Um, finally, why don't you tell everyone where they can connect with you, what you're doing, find out more about um, about visual leadership. Yeah, great. Thanks. So, um, you know, great place to start would be our website, imagethink.net. Uh, lots of resources there. Um, you can also find my book, Draw Your Big Idea, either on the Image Think website or on Amazon, other book sellers. And um, you can also always reach out to me on LinkedIn. I think I might still be the world's only Nora Hurting. So be Perfect. Be yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure to have all those links in the show notes at rashadoblander.com. And Nora, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your story and for all these wonderful uh, ideas and, and discussion about uh, visual leadership and, and using art and leadership here. Thank you so much. Thanks. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, would you head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe, leave me a rating, leave me a review, and share this with a friend. It spreads the word and helps the podcast grow. You can also find me on social media at R.E. Oberlander. Until next time, stay awesome.